Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm going to continue talking about um, that process of recreating yourself and uh, creating a healthy relationship with with yourself and with the different aspects of yourself. And but today's video is going to be a little bit more. I'm going to give you more of a little of a spiritual tool uh, that you can use. Um, to for self acceptance and for inner peace and and maybe to also help you understand yourself better um, if you have grown up as the family scapegoat uh, or in a dysfunctional household you know where your caretakers or your parents emotional needs were constantly overshadow overshadowing yours um, the essential connection that you should have forged with yourself, um, with your inner self, was, you know, was, well, severed, and destroyed, not permitted. You were not permitted to have a healthy connection with yourself because you had to constantly look to, you know, tend to uh, an emotionally dysregulated caretaker's needs, right? Um, you, basically, your inner world um, became in competition with whatever unfulfilled needs your narcissistic parent, uh, you know, had. And even the word competition, it doesn't adequately convey uh, the intensity of the situation because maintaining the emotional equilibrium of a narcissistic out of touch with reality parent it becomes the law of the household you know I mean if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, you know you've got your physiologically physiological needs right those have to be fulfilled and your safety and security needs there's a need to have a sense of belonging there's a need to work on your self-esteem, and then finally you self-actualize, right? Those are, that's sort of the pyramid of, of needs. Uh, and, and that's something that in healthy families, you know, healthy parents will strive to give that to their children, right? They will give them emotional and physical safety, you know, a sense to belong. Uh, they will help their child with their self-esteem, and they will help, help them self-actualize, you know? But in a narcissistic family system, that's not how it works, you know. All the needs basically are centered around appeasing the narcissist and complying with them. Complying with their dysregulated moods, complying with their out-of-reality ideas, out-of-touch-with-reality ideas, you know. And, um, you know, and of course, you, you anything that has to do with self-actualization, well, it, it has to conform to the narcissist's idea of how they require you to self-actualize, you being an extension of them. So whatever unfulfilled dreams and desires they decided that they were going to, you know, um, you know project you know those those needs were going to be projected onto you for you to fulfill whatever it is that they cannot fulfill for themselves uh so it's all around the narcissistic parent everything revolves around the narcissistic parent and when they throw tantrums you will be told that it's because you didn't correctly attune to their emotional dysregulation you know so it's really vital to recognize that your body and your mind have been sort of forced to become disconnected from yourself. In fact, you may even feel guilty for connecting with yourself, for connecting with your inner world. Because if that doesn't align with their world, then you are made to be a, a bad person, right? You're going to be called oppositional. You're going to be told that you have a bad character. And so in the healing process, in your healing process, it's so crucial for you to become mindful of yourself as a whole being. And this means you becoming mindful of how you treat your physical self, your emotions, your approach to learning, um, how you nurture that inner motivation that aligns with your own desires for you, for you to actually reconnect with those parts of you and for you to allow yourself to, to thrive, you know, with, 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 you know, for you to thrive with through who you are and who you want to be and through your values and your goals 
basically all your actions aligning with your internal world, with what you want for yourself. The tool that I'm sharing with you today to help you do that is actually used in various cultures and spiritual beliefs worldwide and throughout history also, uh, you know, including Buddhism and Hinduism, um, Native American cultures, Chinese philosophy, uh, Japanese Shintoism, uh, paganism, Judaism, you know, um, and, and I'm sure I'm, there's many more that I'm not naming right now, but this is a very, uh, this is a tool that had withstood the test of time and the test of boundaries because all of these traditions employ uh, the symbolism of the four elements uh, that's earth air fire and water and of course they all have slight variations um, you know with how it's interpreted and you know there's additions and such you know but mainly those four earth air fire and water as are used as tools to promote self awareness and mindfulness and introspection and for you to gain also you can use them to for you to gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your your natural self um, so if you take a look at the symbolism of the four elements you can actually learn to balance and reconnect with your own inner world and um, this method will offer sort of an effective uh, way to categorize and harmonize the different aspects of yourself within yourself. So, I will explain. Uh, first, if you look at the earth element, or the earth element is um, embodies qualities such as stability, grounding, endurance, hardness, foundations, resilience, um, uh, steadiness right uh, the earth element is steady it's like that rock behind me right it represents the physical world everything that you can touch right everything that's tangible and so you can connect with this earth element right now through outside of you through the sensations of your skin right like the texture of your shoes um, or, or your socks touching your feet or the ground beneath your feet or if you take your hands and you touch the earth you touch the floor you know um, that is the direct connection um, that you have with the earth element and um, as you focus on on that touch feeling you will notice you know there's a hardness there's a softness there's a smoothness it depending on what is touching is like a pressure right depending on what is touching your skin and which area of your skin um, and within your body the earth element manifests as the hardness you know that keeps you you know that keeps your body from collapsing right it's like your skeletal structure or the hardness of your teeth when they touch each other your your, your jaw clenching right that's that's sort of the earth element within you and you know sometimes when we sense some anxiety if we go even deeper within when we sense anxiety within our body it can almost feel like an in, like we're stuck you know or like an internal tremor it's like it's sort of reminiscent of like tectonic plates that are about to snap because the pressure is just so big right so if you acknowledge that this is the earth, that, that inner stuckness is basically the earth element as way attempting to release something, right? There's too much pressure, it, something needs to be released, you know? And when you feel emotionally stuck or trapped, the physical manifestation of your feeling can be addressed, you know, it, it, it's really helpful to address this through physical movement, right? Because the earth element is, is physical. So, you know, if you feel like this stuckness within you, this rigidity, like there's too much earth element within you, you know, you can do physical activities to try and release that because trauma is stored in the body, right? Trauma, trauma is not just emotional and psychological, it's also physical. So activities like yoga or dancing or, or hiking or swimming or go to the gym or skateboarding, anything, any sort of activity that you could do you know physically uh, will help you uh, connect with your body with your earth element you know and um, it will also help you um, release a little bit of that inner pressure right that you feel within and um, you know the earth element is also because it's a foundation and grounding that energy within you can actually be channeled 
towards something useful. It can be channeled to empower you when you need to say no, when you need to lay down a boundary. You know that expression like when you need to put your foot down on the ground, right? That's the earth. You're connecting with the earth when you're doing it, when you're doing that. You need to put your foot down on the ground. So you can always harness and guide this energy, the earth elements energy, in whichever direction you need to. Okay. After that, there's the element of fire. There's the fire element. The fire element is like the life force, is, is that heat, you know? It, it provides heat and light. And it represents pure energy. You know, it's your life force, it's your courage, it's your motivation. It's powerful, intense emotions that will like explode. You know, if they're not tended to, it's, it's passion, it's desire, it's also your willpower. Uh, just by paying attention to the slight temperature changes around you. Like depending on where you're sitting, if you're outside or inside, if the sunshine is shining on you, or if you're near, near a window, or if you're in the shade, you will feel the subtle temperature changes. So you can practice mindfulness and pay attention to those subtle temperature changes around you. You know, that's the element of fire. And also, for example, you know, if you take your hand and you rest it on your chest, and you take a moment to feel the warmth of your body and your hand and the connection feel your own body heat within you this is your energy your fire your physical life force you can feel it if you take a moment you know to put your hand on your chest and feel that exchange of heat you know that heat that that's your the element of fire within you and and if you center yourself you know even deeper within if you pay attention to your emotions you know um fire will burst out right it's it doesn't know it, it just burns it will just burn you know much like an explosion will just burn right so if the fire element within you is not channeled properly it will find a way to burst out it you know and it will scorch anything in its path even things like um uh, even things like people you hold dear or if you care about someone it doesn't matter like when, when that explodes it will affect everything around you that's why it's so important to learn to channel that fire element through you towards constructive areas of your life you know you have to acknowledge that you do we all have this energy within us and we we all feel the pressure that emotional pressure sometimes that will burst right if we don't take care of ourselves or if we allow you know, too much, um, you know, negative narcissistic energy of the family system in, right? That will ignite sort of a fire within us, right? And so, you know, this energy, it can be destructive if it's not harnessed correctly, but it can also be very constructive because you can use that fire within you um, to assert yourself, to assert your boundaries. Uh, it can be used for you to incinerate those limiting beliefs that are holding you back. And it can give you that spark that you need, that energy that you need to get up in the morning and to, you know, and to get your life where you want it to go. Because everybody has been pushing you back, you know, from achieving that potential. So that fire energy, you know, it, it will when harnessed correctly, well, it will, it will help bring you from point A to point B. And, you know, you're allowed to be angry when people prevent you from, you know, from your own self-actualization, from connecting with yourself, from protecting yourself. Anger is, you know, is a dangerous emotion because it, it can hurt people if it's not uh, expressed, you know, right if it's not expressed healthily and when it becomes a trigger but if you harness it right that anger can actually help you not go back to toxic relationships if you simply use it as a tool to recognize that something is very toxic for you and that you don't need to go back into um, these harmful dynamics and instead you can use that fire energy and bring that energy towards goals and to you know towards um you know, like giving you that motivation that you need to get up in the morning to take care of yourself physically and to, to achieve your goals, you know. 
After that, you have the water element. Now, the water element is a shape-shifting artist, right? It's water, it's fluid, it's adaptable, it's effortless. And it will go with the flow. It will go wherever it needs, wherever the path takes it, right? Um, it, also, it also washes away impurities. And it embodies uh, adaptability and, and balance, emotional healing, and it represents the subconscious and the spiritual your spiritual journey, right? So on a physical level, uh, water, it cleanses your skin, it cools you down, it warms you up, it adapts to what you need. And um, your body will signal with, will signal with thirst that it needs water. And if you shift your, your focus towards your body, you know, you'll discover that the water element is, is like the moisture in your eyes, your tears, it's, it's sweat, it's the, the, your saliva, you know, it's, um, it's in your blood and it's, it, it will carry vital nutrients all over your body, right? Your body will signal to you uh, when you need water through thirst, right? You'll get thirsty. Your body will let you know that it needs to um, be revitalized, right? You need to quench your thirst. But, you know, on an emotional level, sometimes we can be also thirsty for, for other things, like for validation or for peace, or we can be thirsty for, for self-compassion. Uh, we can be thirsty for, for love, you know? So the water element reminds you that you can actually give those things to yourself, that you can actually, you know, balance that within yourself by starting to pay attention to quenching your own thirst. You know, every time you think about the guilt or what the narcissistic family system wants from you, you know, that will make you thirsty because it depletes, like, you know, your emotions. It's like you're giving them a drink, but you're not using you're not keeping any water for yourself right so you gotta quest your you know quench your own thirst you gotta be able to take care of yourself and quench your own thirst too and so the water element reminds you of that so the water element represents that connection with the deeper parts of yourself and uh however there's a warning about too much water in your life right too much water you can drown if you dive too deep into that water, into those emotions, you know, then you, you, you don't see the other elements anymore. You lose connection with everything else, right? And so it's important for you to strike a balance within um, tending to that water element, you know, and tending to all the other aspects of that you need to be balanced within as well. Um, so to harness the power of the water element, allow yourself to hear your inner voice and, and go with your own flow. You know, water doesn't question itself. It doesn't question its choices. It just goes wherever it's supposed to go, wherever, wherever, whatever path, you know, was carved out for it, it will just follow, right? Um, water won't question if it made a mistake, you know, it, it's about... Water, you know, is about surrendering, surrendering to the current, uh, to your own journey. It's about surrendering yourself to your current journey and accepting that this is, you know, the flow of your life and that um, you can always harness that energy with it whenever you need emotional healing, wherever you need to adapt or also uh, for inner renewal, right? Um, and so remember that you can always tap into that whenever you need to. Uh, and, I, and then lastly, we have the air element. And the air element represents mental clarity. Um, it serves as the silent carrier, right? The air element transports the warmth of the sun, it, the seeds, you know, uh, the dust of the earth, the droplets of rain. It possesses, it, like it has a huge influence everywhere. And it's invisible, you know, it's invisible. And the air element, uh, it knows, it has no boundaries. Air is freedom, it's mental clarity, it's the boundless realm of possibilities. It embodies, you know, communication and knowledge and learning and thinking and even playfulness as well. Possibilities will unfold to you when your mind is clear. Uh, when your mind is clouded, you may feel quite directionless. Like when you feel foggy, when your brain feels foggy, you, you don't know which direction to go. 
So it's important to engage in like mental exercises regularly so that you can sort of clear your mind and keep your mind sharp so that it doesn't fog up. And um, air is also the breath of life. Um, you know, if you take a moment to notice how effortlessly the air flows in and out of your body right now without you being even aware of it or having to do anything about it, it just happens without you noticing. And the element of air serves as a connection that you may not even be aware that uh, you have. Like if you consider the trees, for example, you know, you exhale carbon dioxide, which the trees breathe in. And then they exhale oxygen, which you breathe in. So we have a connection with the trees through our breath. And we are not even consciously aware of this, but we are actually connected to the trees just from the act of breathing alone. You know, so if you think about that, it, it's interesting because, you know, air is that connection. And sometimes you don't even know that you have, that, you, that there's a, that connection, that it exists, even though it does. And if you um, dive deeper into the sensation of the air element within you, it, you know, you take a deep breath and it feels light and, and playful and you can't really catch it, you know. It, air can't be restrained. It, it can be invisible. It can be elusive and yet it exists. So if we have too much air element within us, at times we may choose to, you know, become invisible and avoidant ourselves, right? We can, we don't want to get caught, we don't want to be seen, we want to stay invisible. So, but uh, we may forget that we actually have a physical form, a physical presence in this life, and that there are other elements that make up who we are, right? So too much air, you may want to feel, you know, like... You don't want to voice your opinion, like you don't want to say anything, you want to stay invisible and such, you know. So remember that the importance is to have a balance of all the elements within you. A little bit of everything, you know. And you can channel the element of air through communication and writing down your thoughts, absorbing valuable information, keeping your mind sharp, you know, allowing your mind to process information you can also channel it through play and curiosity because air has no boundaries, you know, it goes as far as the eye can see. You know, air is not afraid of the unknown, right? So it's helpful, it will help you turn that fear into curiosity, you know, channeling the element of air. It's, you know, transforming fear into curiosity and exploration. And so now, as you notice um, the four elements in your environment and within you, you can give it a little bit of thought and ask yourself which element feels a bit out of balance within you, uh, which element do you need more in your life, you know, um, and, and, you know, which element is like, sort of stuck and you have to release maybe. Um, the aim of this exercise is for you to create a harmonious balance. Um, between these elements within yourself, fostering a powerful connection with your inner world and you, between your mind and your body. So I hope this helped you. A uh, little spiritual twist on healing after narcissistic abuse. And as always, remember to take really good care of yourself. Repeat, I love myself, I trust myself, and I'll see you soon.